so I am so, so happy for my guest that is joining us today, and I know all the listeners will be too. If I look to one side, it's because I've got my screen with my notes on one side and there, so if I'm looking at, away from the camera, that's why. But today, we are so lucky to be joined by Dr. Martin Morin. Now, let me just introduce Dr. Morin to you all. Um, Dr. Morin is a graduate of Auburn University and has been a research oriented veterinarian for 50 years. You don't look old enough. He's worked for the National <laughs> Institute. Well, even my wife would disagree with you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> no, you um, so Dr. Morin has worked for the National Institutes of Health and two international pharmaceutical companies. He's published peer review research to improve human and animal health. And Dr. Morin is an expert in the science of redox signaling. Now, I have been lucky enough to listen to some of your calls on redox signaling with animals um, through the research that I've been doing for the ASEA products. And the reason I was so, so pleased that you agreed to come on today, thank you so much for doing that. No is problem. So many of us and a lot of my listeners are lucky enough to share our lives with animals of all different species. And I think what us humans are realizing is that the animals, the stresses that our animals are placed under now are at least the same and often more than what us humans in from contaminants in the food, in the environment, in the water, from lifestyle choices that we as their pet parents make for them, you know, about whether to have certain medications, preventative chemicals that were often encouraged to use with our animals so quite often our animals are subject to a lot more sort of what I would call invasive treatments or chemical intervention than even us humans are and a lot of my listeners and myself and my immediate two and four legged family you can see I've got my dogs in the background there and we've got two cats on the desk in front of me they all want to listen in but so many of my listeners have been doing a lot of research about how redox signaling molecules in the form of the ASEA is really transforming their own health. And what I really wanted to do is have the conversation with you today, Dr. Martin, about how there's so much synergy about how this can work with our beloved animals in our lives and why it's so important that we think about using this for our animals and don't keep it all to ourselves. Um, so I suppose before we launch into um, our animals, which is everyone's favourite subject, could you start by just giving us a little explanation of what redox signaling molecules are and how they can help us humans and our animals? Well, again, thank you for asking. It's always great to chat with new people about redox. Redox, um, reductant oxidant. It's a contraction of reductant molecules and oxidant molecules. Everything is about oxidation, right? You have a little ding in your car and the next thing you notice is some rust. Oxidation of that metal that's now exposed because the paint's been chipped off. And uh, our cells, our bodies are oxidizing. I'm a little older than Catherine. A lot older, I think, than oh, gathering. Uh, and, um, and so you're looking at an oxidized body as opposed to a less oxidized body. And, um, and so if we can keep these things in better balance, uh, and Catherine is a holistic um, person helping people find wellness paths through a holistic means, uh, if we can find balance in our bodies as well as in our lives, our bodies just do better. They, they are more efficient. And um, I like to remind people that before you were born or your animals were born, they were already healing. Mm -hmm. Cells were already being replaced with better cells, even in the womb. And um, and it doesn't matter. Uh, we could get a turtle in an egg, right? It doesn't have to be a womb. Every living thing uses these redox molecules, plant cells, animal cells. All cells are alive because they have these redox molecules. Now, in the case of plants, they need carbon dioxide. In the case of animals, we need oxygen. Uh, but other than that, 
redox molecules are why we're alive. Mm -hmm. If you, if I stop breathing oxygen right now, Chance only got me. I mean, uh, Catherine's only got me on this call for five, ten minutes, maybe five, where I'm still sitting in my chair. Redox molecules are exactly the same thing. If I stop making redox molecules in my cells right now, I'm I'm going to be out of here in five minutes. And uh, so, you know what? I call that vital. Mm -hmm. Without these redox molecules, we're not going to do, we're not going to be alive. All right. So you're already making them or you wouldn't be here to talk to us right now. Uh, and you're not making as much. I'm assuming most of the audience here is adults, right? Yeah. Once we've passed puberty, that's a lot quicker for our animal friends than it is for us. But once we've passed puberty, we just can't make as many of these molecules as our body would benefit from having. And so a company called ASEA came along with a way to not just produce these molecules outside the body, but the real the real challenge was to stabilize them. Because if you know anything about redox molecules, you know they're fleeting, like a spark, right? And so if I if I go to my engineer friend, engineers are some of the toughest. If I go to my engineer friend and I say, I have a spark and I'm gonna put it in this mason jar and I'm gonna light my barbecue in a month with this spark, I don't think he's going to believe me. Mm. right because what's a spark a spark is gone as soon as it sparks it's gone and so i'm telling you we have redox sparks in our bottle but they're not gone and that's the uh, I, you know i don't want to call it magic it's real science uh, they really are coexisting in that bottle they're coexisting in a tube of gel and uh waiting for what waiting for organic, right? Um, we have spray bottles we used for RCI. I like it in my eyes, but Kathy likes my wife, Kathy. My wife is Catherine as well. So I'll talk about Kathy from time to time. Uh, Kathy sprays uh, this liquid, redox liquid onto her face. And when she does it, she's standing in front of her orchid. Mm -hmm. You know, why not help the orchid as well as help her face with the overspray? And um, and this is this is real biology. Believe it, you, you, know, you can believe it or not. I mean, this is uh, Dr. Um, Naidu, I, what was his first name? I want to say Aaron, but I'm not sure about that. Dr. Naidu had an entire research career in redox. I want you to see this is a very thick book. <laughs> Got one back behind me there. Uh, all about redox biology. Redox is life. And we're going to make less of these as we age. So somebody 75 years old, I want to age more gracefully. I have a way to supplement it back to my cells so my cells can function more efficiently. This is not rocket science here, folks. It sounds weird. It sounded weird to me too, but it really works. And, and we get to live younger, longer. And so do our pets, if you want to share. It's just a lovely explanation. This is what I love because... And in a nutshell, people are used to hearing of miracle cures and things like this. But I always like to say nature always does have all the answers. And the closest we can get to nature and what this company have managed to do is basically bottle nature, which is just absolutely amazing. Um, so, why... well, let me just pause right there, Catherine, yeah. because they've bottled oxygen, too. Mm. All right. Now, here's the difference. Oxygen is very corrosive. You can have too little oxygen and you're in trouble. You can have too much oxygen and you're in even more trouble. Mm. You can't overdo this. The well, beauty of this is it comes from inside of our cells. Our cells are full of salt water between our cells, salt water. If you take sodium away from chloride, it's not salt anymore. If you take hydrogen away from oxygen, it's not water anymore. So the, the company is going through an electrolysis process to separate salt and water into redox signaling molecules. And so if you should 
drink too much, I don't think it's possible, but if you did drink too much, it would just turn it back into salt and water. Your body knows how to do this. If we are supplementing, whether we're putting the topical gel on or using the liquid form, our body knows exactly what to do with these redox molecules. And that's such an important distinction because it's, it's working in a very different way to what people are doing with supplements. You know, you're literally sort of refilling the cellular tank, so to speak. And I just love it. This is one of the things it's so safe. Your body can't be allergic to it um, because it's in every cell. So when we turn to our animals, um, would you, why would animals, why would we want to give these redox to animals? And would you recommend you people using it preventatively before they notice any problems occurring? Oh, my goodness. Um, health issues are not restricted to the elderly, mm. right? I mean, there are animals that have health challenges early on. There are babies that have health challenges early on. And so there's no age where this is inappropriate. And um, I remember a tale, um, a, a testimony, really, of a young child with a terrible lung problem, genetic lung problem, where the liquid or the mucus in the lungs is, gets really, really thick. And so normally uh, we can cough as humans, we can cough it out, our pets can cough it out. Um, these children can't. And so they're often hospitalized. And so this family had an early warning that the child had this tendency and they were just dropping liquidacea onto the chest, just drop, 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 you know, baby, just a little bit, drop, drop, drop. As far as I know, this child is now a teenager and has never been hospitalized. Whereas these children that have this genetic problem tend to be hospitalized multiple times per year just to kind of clear out their lungs. Is this a miracle? No, it's just biology, right? And so in the case of that baby, or in some cases, young animals have a defect. There's something where the redox is not in balance. And when we supplement it back, the body can rebalance itself. Think balance here. Um, balance is important, right? Especially as we get older, that's one of the things people worry about is how balanced are they? Um, because falling down is not a good idea. Yeah. We, we don't have nine lives like kitty cats, right? Mm. And, and so balance is, is where we're going with this. We want to re I am going to rebalance my cells with these redox molecules for the rest of my days because it will help me age more gracefully. Yeah, absolutely. You um, you mentioned in the introduction about most animals, not all, but a lot of animals that we tend to share our lives with, dogs, cats, horses, guinea pigs, rabbits, etc., do have a shorter lifespan than humans in general. So in a way, a lot of things are speeded up. Their life cycle is speeded up compared to humans. So I would imagine this makes it even, you know, so, so relevant for our animals because a lot of the decisions, a lot of the stresses that are on our animals can actually come from our human decision making, you know, what foods are available to feed them, um, what regimes we've been working with with our vets about um, medication they're having, exercise levels, etc. What would you say to that, Dr. Martin? Well, of course, their life cycles are a little compressed, um, but, you know, there's some that live longer too, right? Yeah. Uh, tortoises come to mind, but uh, this is not unique to an animal or to a human. It's the same. That's where I want you to go with this. Um, it's the same. And we can help any living thing. In, let's just start with us, right? You know, they you get on an airplane and they give that little safety speech and they talk about the face mask falling down if the cabin pressure's lost and um, and what do they tell you to do? They tell you to put your mask on first, right? Yeah. 
if you're going to help anybody sitting around you, it doesn't help if you've passed out. Exactly. So <laughs> put your mask on first. Put your redox mask on first. Figure out that you have, um, you know, one of the big problems with ASEA is it what? Sounds too good to be true. How could this be true? That was my dilemma at the beginning of my journey with ASEA. But, and of course, really smart, right? <laughs> you know, we're all really smart. And you don't want to be tricked. So mm. uh, I was quite happy to humor my friend who told me about this. And I'll try your silly salt water product, right? I'll try it. But I started at about age 66. And quite frankly, I was older nine years ago at 66 than I am today because I supplement these molecules. So I was an old sick guy at 66. And when I started drinking this guy's silly saltwater product, didn't believe a word of it, um, my body started correcting all its problems. And there were many, many problems at the beginning of my journey with ASEA. And my body started correcting all that. And so quite frankly, I had no problem trying his product, right? I had no trouble with that. My problem began when it worked. <laughs> yeah. Now I have a dilemma. Why does this stuff work? What's going on? And it really is just biology. It really is. Um, Catherine is a holistic um, practitioner, right? She's helping people find balance through nature. And you're here you're talking to a Western trained veterinarian. Uh, as I went through my medical training, I heard about quacks, right? People selling snake oil. Turned out I was the quack. Turned out I was the one peddling the snake oil from pharmaceutical companies. I've worked for two of them. And uh, now I don't use those products. <laughs> hmm? What? <laughs> A guy who worked at the National Institutes of Health, worked for pharmaceutical companies, doesn't use their products. Hmm. We're not too old to learn. Be careful what you take and put into your body. It's so, so true. And, you know, going through, we all have our different journeys through life, but the main thing is that we absolutely learn for them. Um, so with animals, let's get on to some of the main questions that I get asked all the time. So with humans, we get our little plastic measuring cup to take the liquid. We take it into our mouths. We swirl it around our mouths for 60 seconds to help absorption before swallowing. It's quite difficult to train your animals to do that process. So what are some of your key tips about whether it's a dog or a cat or a horse to get the animals to actually take the ASEA? Well, uh, let's do a little commercial for an ASEA site. There's a, an ASEA site called Animal Webinar Run Together. The word animal, the word webinar, run together. Maybe you can attach it to this yes, video, I Catherine. Animalwebinar.com. And if you go to that site, it has a password. The password is the word associate with a capital A. And in there, you'll find some archive recordings. Some of them are mine, but that's not the point. You may want to listen to some of these animal recovery stories. And, um, and there'll be tips in there about how to train your animals to drink these molecules. So what do we have here? We have salt and water taken apart. Your body's doing it every second of every day taking the sodium away from the chloride, the hydrogen away from the making new molecules. We call them redox signaling molecules, reductants and oxidants. And, and they're balanced in here and they're stable in here. So your animals will actually smell them. You probably don't, but your animals will. And so they're backing up as soon as you open the bottle, they're backing away. But as soon as you train them a little bit, now, when we drink these molecules, we drink them straight. Mm -hmm. As you're exposing your animals to these molecules, you're probably going to have to make a game. So I, I like tiny bits of food or treats that your animal loves. And you put a tiny bit down on a plate and you watch it disappear. You put another one down, it 
disappears. And you put another one down with a couple of drops of acia on top of it, and it still disappears because the game is on, right? You're putting down the treat and it's disappearing. As fast as you put it down, it's gone. And so if you've done this in a little saucer and you've put, you know, five drops and the next time 10 drops and the next time 20 drops, the animal is still going focused on the treat, going to get the treat, going to drink all the liquid to get the treat, not focused on the drink, focused on the treat. And after you've done this training a few times, you'll find that you don't need the treat at all. In fact, when you pick up the bottle, it's very silent, right? Screw the top off the bottle, very silent. Your cat will be on the counter. Absolutely. Your cat knows you picked it up. The dog is rubbing against your leg, knows you picked it up and wants you to pour. Uh, now horses, that's a little different. Um, horses uh, are big. <laughs> They're big. They I don't want to do horse. what they don't want to do, right? Mm. And um, and so in the case of uh, larger animals, cows, horses, um, sometimes it's delivered rectally and you could you know, work with somebody uh, who delivers uh, rectal medicines or whatever and come up with a way to deliver this to your, uh, your horse rectally. They can be trained to drink it. It's a little harder for horses. Yeah, but actually, rectal works just as well. Yeah, and I've actually um, trained both my ponies to take it and they'll very happily take it. And once they've started, you've started that journey, as you explained, um, whether it's your dog, your cat, your horse, um, you'll find that once they've stopped that feedback mechanism working, they want it. They'll want to select it. So I Yes, and one of the things I want to be real clear about here with animals, they can't have a placebo effect. Exactly. Right. I, I can't have a conversation with a dog or cat and convince them that this is good for them. I can't have that conversation. I just have to show them. Mm -hmm. And when they figure it out, and let me just tell you a quick uh, animal story. Actually, the very first one I was personally involved with, we have a friend who's a vet tech, and she's really sharp all by herself. She didn't need me, right? She's really sharp. And her cat was very sick with a liver issue. Uh, so her cat was starting to turn colors. You, you can imagine where all that's going. If I sound like I'm running around in a circle here, it's we don't want to mention medical names, right? We don't want to talk about diagnosis. This is a supplement. I can't treat disease with this supplement. Now, truth be told, this is better than almost any medicine you're going to find, but <laughs> that's against the law. So we're not going to do that. We're going to try to be compliant here. And ASEA is not here to treat, and well, it's not here to diagnose, treat, cure, even prevent chronic health challenges. Why do we say that? It isn't just because it's a law. It's because it's not what the molecules do. The molecules are part of your cell function. And if they, if your cells have more, your cells will function better. We're not fixing cells. We're helping cells function better and then the body fixes itself. Let's focus in on that. We're not treating anything with these redox molecules. The body is going to fix itself more efficiently. Does that help? Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, love it. Um, so don't give up, people. You Be creative, have fun, make it a game. Please, please don't give up because your animals really deserve it. We're going to come on to topical application in a minute. But before I come on to the topical application with either the spray or the gel, um, people get very hung up on feeding guides. I'm not going to call it a dose because it's not a medicine, but on how much to give. Now, with humans, we we say the two ounces morning, two ounces evening, is that a standard amount that a healthy human could take? Um, with animals, we're working at a cellular level, so we're not going on the weight of the animals, are we? No. No. Um, now, the bottle, if you, your UK bottle is a little different from our US bottle, but one of the things it says is two ounces, two to four ounces a day. Yeah. That's not because that's what you 
would benefit from having. In fact, almost everybody I know that's been on this product for any length of time takes about eight. Mm -hmm. So that's double or quadruple what it says on the bottle. Why? Well, let's just back up to that. The bottle is listed at two to four because they don't want to scare you. Scare you. Why would we be scared? Well, your body is, I'm talking to Catherine on a computer right now. My computer backs itself up and is looking for problems all the time. Does it in the background. Your body is detoxifying every minute of every day and you want it to do that in the background. And so when we put people on this product for the first time, their body is full of toxins. And this molecule, these molecules are going to help your cells clean up. They're going to start dumping toxins. They're not going to do it personally, right? They're going to point to the fact that that shouldn't be here. That shouldn't be here. Cell, kick it out, kick it out. And when we kick out too many toxins at one time, guess what? Those toxins aren't in the cell anymore, but now they're still in the body and the body can react to that. Uh, call it a healing crisis. You can, people put different words on it, but it's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. That your body is getting rid of toxins. We just don't want it to happen too fast. And when it happens too fast, people notice, and then they blame the blue bottle when it's in fact their body detoxifying itself, but just too quickly for them. And the same can happen for our animals. Our animals are toxic too. The foods we're eating are toxic. The foods they're eating are toxic. And, and we need to, um, to come into this kind of slowly. And actually the game, the treat training method uh, is really good because you're exposing them to a small amount of redox at the beginning. And they're getting a chance for their cells to adjust and get rid of the toxins, get rid of the trash, if you want to think of it that way, and uh, get the trash not just out of the cells, but out of the body. How do we do that? A lot of water, exercise, the, the normal things you would do to detoxify, your animals need to do that too. They're going to need water. They're going to need movement. Absolutely. Yeah, movement and water are key to helping this process increasing the number of our redox molecules, uh, it will help that process work more efficiently and the health benefits be visible more quickly. So how much? It's about how old and how big the need is, right? So um, we say, I I'm just going to figure on a normal adult, and I think almost all of us do better at eight ounces. I actually drink more than that, but, you know, that's a decision I've made, not because I'm sick. Don't start a bunch of rumors, Dr. Mm -hmm. Moran's sick. No, I'm not. I drink more because I can, not right? And um, so let's just focus on eight. Eight ounces is about the uh, amount you might want to serve to a healthy, younger horse. Mm -hmm. So if you have a sick young horse, you're going to need more than eight ounces. If you have a healthy older horse, probably going to need more than eight ounces. It's about age and need. Yeah. And so we have um, we have young animals that have big health needs. I mean, I I remember a, have time for another quick tale. Yes, please. Yeah. Um. If you know anybody with dairy farms, um, young calves can have uh, a problem where they have very loose stool and can dehydrate them and they can be in very, very bad shape very quickly. And so a farmer who knew about this, a dairy farmer, um, he had he, in his head, he had a sort of a criteria that said that calf is too weak. I probably can't save that calf. I'm going to work on this one over here with his old remedies, right? He came along with the redox molecules and he started to use them himself. And he thought, what if he still got the same paradigm in his head, right? This one I can't help, that one I can. He started giving the redox to the ones he didn't think he could help. And he started using his regular paradigm on the ones he thought he could. 
he started losing more of these than these. He went to all his dairy farmers and said, hey, we don't have to give up on some of those calves. And um, they all started finding ways to get the, get the molecules into them. But it's not about cows. It's not about horses or dogs or cats. It's about cells, right? I want my cells to function efficiently. And when, um, I mean, I have uh, grand dogs, like Kathy and I travel too much to have regular pets, but uh, we have grand dogs, right? And some of my grand dogs, if I start pouring this, will drink the whole bottle. Yeah. That tells you something, right? The dog knows this is good for me, right? I'm going to drink all of it. If he'll keep pouring, I'll keep drinking it. Pay attention, people. Pay attention. I love it. Your, your animals will point you in a good direction here. Mm. And the no placebo in, I mean, I work a lot with people's animals, and this is what I love about it is um, there's so much advice out there for people, but the animals are giving you a very real, raw, honest response. And the results that I'm seeing with it are absolutely amazing. So sometimes it can really help humans overcome their resistance when they see these miraculous results with their animals. Now, can we talk a little bit, please, Dr. Martin, about the use of the gel or the spray in the UK, we can't get the um, little spray bottles they sell. So I put some in a spray bottle. So looking at sort of transdermal bioavailability, getting it in through um, topical, whether it's the gel or the spray, and there's lots of ways people can do that. Um, can you talk a little bit about your experience and recommendations for that with animals? Uh, <clears throat> redox molecules, liquid form. Redox molecules gel form. It's exactly the same, right? So which is easier? Uh, we had a rabbit that was um, having trouble with its balance and the rabbit uh, didn't really like to be handled very much. And, um, and so wasn't touching the liquid. They couldn't handle it to put on the gel. And what they finally started to do was to take some of the gel and run it around inside the rabbit's mouth. And uh, the rabbit trying to get rid of it, can't get rid of it because it's gel, viscous. And um, eventually the rabbit said, hey, that stuff's good. His balance came back to normal. He, he wanted some more, right? He, he didn't care if they were sticking it in his mouth anymore now. And uh, eventually started to drink it and, and did quite it quite well actually they were starting this rabbit on the on the redox molecules because of the balance issue but they also got a benefit in the rabbit's kidneys brilliant uh, you know what it, it, this sounds crazy i understand that it sounds crazy try it mm -hmm. try it yourself See if you can measure some kind of a benefit um, I, I sent catherine a picture did you use that picture with a half face yeah. Shall I just share my screen and show people that? Yeah, please. Yeah, the half face thing, right? I was using the topical gel because it helps um, It helps people. Can you see that okay, Dr. Martin? I, I see it, yeah. yeah. So it helps people um, look younger, right? Um, it, at the beginning, when we had the gel, we were showing it to an older audience and saying, hey, you could have some fewer wrinkles. And I, I was showing some folks um, these photos and they said, hey, that's just Photoshop. Somebody just touched up that picture. And I thought, hmm, I'm a researcher. My face has two sides. <laughs> this is crazy. D don't do this at home. Like <laughs> you've heard those kind of recommendations. Yeah. Don't do this at home. All right. So I started putting the gel on one half of my face, the left side here. Um, it's actually the right side if you yeah the orientation correctly. It's the right side of my face, left side left side of the picture. Uh, twice a day for twenty eight days. We call this product Renew twenty eight. So it was twenty eight days, and I took a single photograph. This is one picture. I didn't do the editing with a dotted line down the middle of a single photograph. Actually, if anybody has the original picture of this, my granddaughter 
is right over here where it says the word pets right beside me. She was nine years old with perfect skin. So what I was trying to demonstrate was perfect skin. Audrey's not in this picture that you're seeing right now, but she behind the word pets, you can imagine a nine-year-old with perfect skin. And this is better skin and this isn't, right? Way over on the right side of the picture is not good skin. And that's because um, it doesn't have as many molecules as the one side did. And it hasn't gotten that efficient, that cellular efficiency yet. And part of why I really focus people in on this photograph is you'll notice that the left side of the photo is actually plumper, right? The skin is thicker than the right. The right looks a little bit wizened and uh, and and obviously more wrinkles. Um, there's no moisturizer in this product, folks. The skin is thicker because it healed itself, right? The skin cells did better. And um, and without moisturizer, that happened in that happened in 28 days. You can take a picture down. But um, but this is just an example. Um, in my case, I'm a researcher, so I was playing around. Uh, but uh, don't do it. it, it it's been done. <laughs> uh, now, I want you to have a little sympathy for the other Catherine, my wife, Catherine. She was living with this half face guy, right? <laughs> she would only stay on my right side because that was the younger looking side. She would sleep on my right side. I mean, goodness gracious, this became quite a joke. And she was mad at me. Not because I was doing the experiment, because she said the gel didn't work for her. I said, what? She said, it doesn't work for me. Working for you, but it doesn't work for me. I said, well, put it on half your face. You want to guess how many days she could keep that up? Two. <laughs> three. three, three. In three days, she said, look at this. And she quickly balanced herself back up. She didn't want to look like me. <laughs> so she, uh, you know what? Be as skeptical as you want. Go ahead. It's actually healthy. We love skeptics, right? Okay. If you're honest and you'll stay with this product, follow instructions, stay with this product, you will have a benefit and your pets will do it faster than you because they're less skeptical. It's just they're less skeptical they are. Absolutely love it. And I would say, you know, if people are um, struggling to get their animals to take it initially, use the gel on them so i've used the gel extensively with all my animals even my guinea pigs with amazing results um and you know there's lots of ways you can even use them on the ear flaps and on the ear as you said you can it's safe to use on the gums you can use it on their tummies where they've got less fur just because it goes in easier there and on their femoral artery on their paws so be creative and you can also, I have also used a lot the spray on them because even when you're spraying on the fur, that will still absorb into the bloodstream, won't it? Well, <clears throat> I have said to more than one person who's come to me with a really sick animal, how important is the hair coat? Mm. If you have a an animal you're worried is not going to be with you much longer and you're worried about clipping the fur off or the hair off, what hello <laughs> this gel will work better when it is in contact with skin how much can you get into them with the liquid how much can you put on topically to the skin but don't throw it on the top of uh you know a poodle <laughs> don't do that don't put it on the hair coat of a cat although the cat will probably lick it off that might be good but uh you, you're you have to it starts with you do you believe if you believe, then you're not going to be embarrassed if you walk into your vet's office and you've clipped some of the hair off the belly of your dog or your cat, or you've got a, a lump on the side of your dog or your cat and you've clipped the hair around that. I would. <laughs> now, I'm not telling you to, right? You have to make your own choices. But if I had a pet that was in trouble, I would have a pair of clippers. I would. 
I agree with you completely. And don't be afraid to think that the gel isn't going to be effective because it's very effective and gets into the body very quickly when you apply it on the skin. Um, you can also spray the liquid in eyes, can't you? Oh, I love that. I mean, personally, Kathy and I don't go anywhere without a liquid spray bottle in the car, right? Because you can drive further. Your eyes don't get as tired. And the same for their animals. Uh, that's one of the ways to get horses, get their attention. I mean, they're not going to like it when you hit that spray button the first couple of times. But once they feel the benefit to their goopy eyes, because a lot of horses have goopy eyes from being in barns, and uh, they'll be leaning in. They'll keep their eye wide open and they'll lean their big heads right into you to get more spray into their eyes. They figure this out very, very quickly. One of the problems, a lot of the problems for horses are connected to feet, right? Yeah. I mean, they're walking around on the end of a fingernail, folks, right? And if you can get gel at the top of a hoof, Clippers, clippers, clippers. Can I say clippers again and again and again and again? If you can get some of the gel at the top of that hoof, that nail, it's like the fingernail. Um, there's a whole bunch of, go into that archive, go into that animal webinar archive, listen to some of the stories people tell about their horses and, um, and you know, other, other big animals. This is an amazing opportunity for you to help your animals do better, but I want you to start by putting your own oxygen mask on first, mm -hmm. <laughs> have your own benefit so that you believe that uh, Catherine is telling you the truth, she is. Yeah, and and, you know, and and our animals are very connected to our energy. So if you're worried about trying to give it to your animal or put it on, they'll pick up on that. So. Um, so just a few points. I'm going to summary a few key things for people working with animals. And please do correct me if I get anything wrong or if I miss anything out. OK. So number one, do not use metal bowls. We want no. to be using glass or ceramic or plastic if you really can't use glass. Really, really hard plastic. This oh. is a plastic bottle, but it's really hard plastic and it is lined. So, yeah. Um, yeah. No metal bowls that'll react with metal. Yeah. The second thing is, is we don't want you leaving it down all day for your pets. We want you to train them to, to as you pour it out, then to drink it as quickly as possible, because otherwise it will lose its uh, potency. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you're not, it's not something you just leave down permanently with the bottle of water. Now, in the lid. And you I never, you never add it to the water bowl. Never the, the, the water bowl is full of organic. You don't want that. Yeah. So that's really important, folks. Now, I'm going to be putting extra resources in the description box below, as Dr. Martin has said. So have a look at those as well. And please, you will have my contact details as well. So if you're not sure, reach out. But it's really a lot simpler than you think. Um, the third thing is, is be consistent. You know, our bodies are using up redox and our cells are turning over all the time. So consistency and using things regularly, it's not something you use for a couple of days and then stop. Um, the more you use it, the better the results you'll get. Um, then I would encourage people to make sure you've got on hand both the liquid, which you can see in the blue bottle below, and the gel. And, you know, you can spray this. I've got loads. I've even managed with my guinea pigs to spray it into their gums and things as well. So be creative and enjoy finding that creativity with your animals because you will not regret it at all. Um, and also do not get worried about dosaging. You know, is as Dr. Martin said, you're really looking at the need of that individual animal. So the older it is or the more health challenges that it's got the more you're going to try and get in or on it um, you cannot overdose it cannot interact with any medication you cannot have an allergic reaction to it have i missed anything important there no that sounds good so now i, I will say i will say this we're not marketing asia is not marketing this for animals yeah right it's it's a human supplement it works better for animals. Why? Because they're not skeptical. So this, um, this will help your animals 
but don't go out and say Catherine is selling a SIA for animals. She wants you to experience a SIA so that you believe in it. It's then your choice to share with your pets. I love that. And Dr. Martin and I were both really, really passionate. And in fact, everyone involved in this, we're sharing this because we want to empower people to have the tools to help themselves and help their loved ones of whatever species that might be. Um, so, you know, this is why we're sharing this information. And I've had so many questions about using it for other members of the family that might have tails and four legs. Um, so, you know, don't be scared to do so. We are all, as Dr. Martin said, it's working at a biological level. It will work for your plants, it work for your animals, and most importantly, it work for yourselves. Thank you so, so much for sharing You're your welcome. time. I am really, really grateful. You've got a beautiful way of putting things across a lot clearer than I manage to a lot of the time. And it's not an accident that people with Dr. Martin's experience and extensive knowledge are using this and actually using this a lot more than other things that they used to have in their toolkit. So, you know, actions speak louder than words. And I hope everyone's seen that. Any passing words for you before we finish? And try it. Try this is don't don't let your head get in the way. Try it. I love Do it. Do it properly. Listen to Catherine or others who are helping you with this. Listen to their advice and take it properly. Uh, you're, you're actually looking at a guy who fought it the whole way. And once I my body started to correct its problems, I said, hmm, maybe I better slow down and do this right. And that that sped everything up a lot. Do it correctly. Lovely. Thank you so much for your time. For everyone who's watching, thank you so much for watching because our health is just such a gift. Um, you know, it's something that we often don't realize how important it is until it's gone. Um, so it's never too late to take this journey and have a wonderful, wonderful holiday break for everyone, wherever you are. Thank you. Blessings. Bye-bye.